we're going to move into another session where we're going to talk a little bit more about the constraints that are out there, the compliance issues, and how to approach them in this changing world. We have two great speakers, Regine Bonneau, who is the founder of RB Advisors. She is a specialist in cybersecurity compliance and risk management. And she's been, she has been working with clients in commercial and government sectors and um, also in different industries, including uh, defense, healthcare, fintech, and so a broad background. So I look forward to your views on the matter. And together with Regine, we have Alex Adonis Sardinas with Fortinet. Fortinet is one of the top providers of cyber technology defense software. Um, Adonis has served in several companies as a security manager and officer. And he's also got a, a collection of four letter security certifications. And so he's a specialist in the matter, but welcome both and please tell us. <laughs> So thank you all for coming out today. Thank you guys for coming. And um, as you know, uh, you know, we always talk about um, when new technology comes around. How do you use it? Exactly. So anything that we've been speaking about and we hearing about is we've seen that is nothing new, right? But it's always something that's evolutionary. So, so a little bit about me, I've been uh -huh. working in the field for over 20 years, so I figured we set for the actual part of our meeting, where we come from, let me know where our expertise is, so you all perform your questions and coordinate to each of us. I uh, serve on the board of advisors for both Nova University and NDC on the cyber side, and I'm also a professor with the Jack Gordon Institute on cyber threat intelligence, for, so for anyone who wants to learn a little bit about the unconventional warfare that exists, feel free to join my class every Tuesday from 6 to 7. I'm going to class. But uh, also just uh, part of my thing that I do aside from just being in the risk uh, management and cybersecurity, the goal was to still kind of start working with you with the technical side and also the management, right? So it depends on why we have to understand why all of these technologies, new or not, and I was sort of preparing us. So part of what we're presenting, right? The what we're saying is you guys requested help, right? They hear that there's a shortage in um cybersecurity preventive infosec, cybersec. Um we're working, we're overworked, we need help. So we requested it, it's like the industry delivered. And now we're looking at now, so now what can we do? Right, so everybody catch that, right? Does anyone remember the references? <laughs> no one, everybody's too young to remember the that show in the robot. Anyways, I, I guess the young one wants to be. Yes, <laughs> and that's um, um, how the one came out of it. So, right, everyone demanded, hey, we want things to be faster. We're demanded to do more with less, at least in my role of work, and I can imagine everyone else's. We're moving, uh, we're rapidly advancing in the technology of AI and what we can do with it. So, okay, well, it's here. Now what? Right? We asked for it now. How do we frame it and use it in our day to day? At least, to, as Mark had mentioned earlier, right? We're coming into unconventional warfare as an example of leveraging AI for that. And also inside of the defense area where I sort of live. Um, you know, how do we leverage that to be faster than the attack, right? Because you are all here today, you woke up, you got dressed, you're here to learn more about it while the attackers are doing this. But now I have a job of communicating with one another, exchanging tools, and already leveraging far more advanced than we are, generally than they are. Something that was like, have you guys, do you recognize any of these uh, select primitive uh, AI already? It's something so, but those were prior to, right? That was the introduction of somewhat, aside from a smartphone and all the other things that we had in um, AI, right? So, but those were just. No, it's not. So, uh, a lot of those were just learning as you go, right? 
Well, I'm not going to be able to do this, so now we can send this out all these to the next day, and then we can just slide We were free of that next day, and then we can do that. What we can do this is to all the way, and what we're going to be in is that it doesn't need all permission to get what is needed to ask. I'm going to get it. I can get it from that room. I'll just go put it somewhere else and put it to you. And this is where we are now, and we're trying to figure that out. So, where are some of the organizations that I deal with, and then, um, uh, that is still where we're going to, right? Where are you guys when they do all of What we've seen is some of them are the some sort of different approach. It depends on the industry that you in. It's not that you to that say, do we have to like the way? Do we like the way? But we start to realize we are somewhat into that sense of it. And some other ones are not like that, right? So, what are some of the controls around it? That's where you sort of, um, that's I'm um, just mentioned about regulation that we hear about everything comes with regulation, we just tell them we are and I guess like it's bad again, right? Because we're dealing with data, what they call it, seems like right. And then progressive approach. Which one of us here would really go and progress about it, right? But this sense that uh it could be the organization that different sit um different sizes and phases that they're doing. I hear this good report. So how many of you are working how many of you are working in organizations that are taking a conservative approach towards the Virginia? Raise your hand really high so we know we are. Okay, don't be ashamed. It's okay. How many of you work in organizations that are problematic approaches? Okay, and last but not least, who is embracing this with open arms? Who's working in an organization for me? Well, I know Trump is. <laughs> What's funny here is that this is my organization where I work at. We're problematic. Uh, we're problematic. We do have a very strict guideline on what our staff is or anything we have. In our case, we're going to have a very guideline on thou shalt not use JavaScript. The reason for this is potentially for leading customer data in our case, right? So I'm noticing maybe when you're needing to talk about but most organizations probably said them. Because we are leveraging that and we're going to use the marketing for a lot of the products that are out there to help in the defense of these new age attackers that are the AI. I don't know if it's the same thing. Well, in my world, it's all, it's all three, but it's all depends on who, right? But a lot of it, if all the sitting depends on the extensive or the majority of their street staff, of their internal um, infrastructure as well. Is looking at what the controls that involve it, and I'm leveraging what I have with it, and how is that going? So I'm still stuck in the middle of time, and then you see in the healthcare organization where you're like, no, 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 right? And this all depends as well, right? So you think you said a good statement there, the mature. So for those that raise their hand under a certain approach, what is the, uh, well, first, uh, my certain hand. Organizing. What is the maturity of your cyber organization? Because Charles has said that I know where his security maturity is at. No <laughs> one's saying that. Okay. But the rest of you that are programmatic and conservative, what, how mature in a scale of one to ten do you feel you're all at? on the higher side or the lower side? So on the higher side, those that raise it, right? Okay. Anyone else? Higher security maturity, right? A deeper understanding. Now, those that were progressive, this fine gentleman up here. What is your cyber security? How do you feel your cyber security maturity is in understanding? Oh, because we're running SARA. So, of course, we're going to use that as leverage the past tool to stand up the conversation. No, but your cyber security maturity, with, uh, oh, which is your knowledge and understanding of cyber. Oh, well, we're just risky. working with process. Okay. That's how it's. All right. So, we're. To summarize, right, where you see the progressive is, hey, we're just we're just going forward. Yeah. We're bringing it in. Security comes after the fact, right? Whereas the other folks are raising their hands, we live and breathe separate security. We understand the dangers or the potential of danger of this. Therefore, that's why you'll say conservative mode or problematic. So um just well we we figured out all of these now sort of combined with your governance to make our clients. You know those are not those are best friends and they can have their as well. So we're looking at some of these next. So some of the um gentlemen that we did and we can have all 
We have a pragmatic, but now a working pulse with development compliance. Um, the function is to help that set, right? But to give that space to the region and that alignment. And why is that, right? Everything that we have, why are we here today? We look at the two other words, right? The governance, um, uh, I spoke about policies, procedures, what are those things we focus on about them, yeah. even though that's not like we already have them, right? right? So, how do we start now? So, the people that we get that from Then you're looking at those standards we've been hearing about all these new regulations that are coming out, our regulations that we already had, and what these regulations are is to protect the data. So, is it too much or more? It's probably not. It's all about now, how do I start applying? Those regulations, those data privacy from which energy, what we're looking at in, um, in AI. And why and why why are we so scared about it? Because the information can be coming from anywhere. How our information and surprise are looking for it, right? So when you're looking at testing and documentation, that's where we start looking at bridging with uh, employees and customers, right? So what we're seeing uh, a little bit is that. No one knows, right? If I don't know, I'm going to do what I need to do. If I'm not part of the conversation, then I don't feel like I belong. And you think about, well, maybe my job is going to be taken apart, right? How do we start having that communication while we're talking about our process of governance? And it's inclusive, right? Being part of it, adding those notes to make them part of the process versus not. And if you sort of back into it, then it's a easier process, just like cybersecurity. If you're putting some new process in place, there to be those for your employees. And I may I think it's still fighting with that as well. I just don't like people with that. Right? How many folks in the room do not use another face? <laughs> Maybe the question is who doesn't go on another face? No. It's okay. There isn't one. Wow, a lot of time. <laughs> How many of you use MFA for your personal activities? Okay, so those that didn't raise their hand, it was if you pass out, don't use that for your personal banking or don't use it for their Facebook account or their Instagram. Has your those that had their hands out, how many times did your Instagram account been hacked or gaming account? We have a friend that their gaming account was hacked for lack of MFA. So there is no platform too small or insignificant that you should not be concerned about multi time authentication as it will probably start seeing something similar. For those boundaries being generated with the eyes, on, right? Of course, now we have access down packs. Hopefully, we get something in the near future on similar to that for the generated big eye. Awesome. Next one. So, some of the privacy, I think I started mentioning some of those things, right? So, we're looking at Canada, right? Canada has always looked at part of the, um, but it's a little bit more forward as so we just kind of through data privacy, right? And we're starting to understand, especially in North Korea. Form out of it. So you have the uh, Data Act and AI Act that's coming along as well. And of course, they give you our favorite um, counterparts, right? The four progressive ones, GDPR, is adding a portion of that into it. And now it's a separate, right? Why? Because the assistance information that we know is important. Why should that matter to us in the US? I think in the means of their voice, right? Now we're global, we know we're global, it's a economy. We don't know where we are, we don't know who our clients are, who our patients are, who even some of our employees are, right? In a sense, right? Yeah, right. So we still have to abide by some of these processes that go on much better. I always say, right, that was strengthened by the model, and then we can go back from there because eventually it's taken them down. I know California just introduced another one, right, into their uh, privacy act as well. For their own system, right? So, why? We understand what the benchmarks are. So, this already has a this management framework. So, we're not really reinventing any wheels, right? Now, we're looking to see how we start looking at those things that we're really doing and adapting it to this new technology I call it right now. Yeah, so Shane does put here. Yes. With um, Virginia, feel free to leverage consultants. That are professionals in the field for those that are progressively adapting AI so you have a better understanding of hey, I want to do all the work, but I also want to safeguard my client's data, right? Because that's important to me. That's what's going to keep me in business. It would be, it would not be wise that you get a fine for those dollars for the potential leak of a customer data 
where the your AI solution was involved and another AI solution. As we'll see forward, uh, we'll see a little forward about AI versus AI, right? Because it's coming. We're just how do we put these bumpers up and how do we save our the most critical asset to us, which is anyone? Most most critical asset to the digital realm. Data. <laughs> right? It's crazy that data has become, you know, like I think in our world, like a record, it's a street about two thirty a record, a record. That's crazy. And that's changing, right? But then when we start looking at all these other things that's coming to play, so we have to start stopping and then start thinking. Yes, we can be progressive, yes, we got better, even as conservative, big steps that we start taking. But now we just look at we're not asking to go back and we do what we've done. Is now set, take a step, reassess what you have already, and now how do we properly move forward or continue monitoring this? Um, um, some of the ethical, ethical, ethical stuff that we're looking at, right? I mentioned a little bit, um, we, we see some companies' policy, but policy is there, but how do we start enforcing those policies, right? We, there's other factors that we can use, and also getting the aspect of the Right. In the aspect of um, the executive, right? If we know where all of this starts, right? We don't own the data. I'm not sure I don't own the data. But however, who is going to know who's right? We mentioned um, if you do data impact assessments, all of your assessments now needs to look at the tool that I hold. Am I going to use the AI to do my assessment if I'm looking to um, do um, AI and not work, right? So it's all of those kinds of tools. And I'm saying that because I have an example on that. So that's a big stop on this, right? And then be accountable and transparent, but it's across the board. And some of those things that we're looking at. And also, rigorous access control, you've got to not change. Is this how we have to put a closer look to it and look more? Because some of us will call it a virtual assistant or digital worker. And the digital worker now has access to 24 7. How do we monitor that and then look into that pattern to move forward? And as we always do, continue to have the new worker system. For some of the fun part, I'm like, no, I'm fun for it, but some of the fun part of how what we're talking about is happening, right? So, what are we seeing in the AI and how is that um, we can sort of come back and get it? That's not us. I'm um, back to my two. Thank you. Uh, so, this is, my, uh, this is my favorite. So, I'm going to take this completely. Hopefully, it looks um, not in my hands. So, as I mentioned before, my background is in cybersecurity. I used to be a pen tester. I got paid to go hack people. It's kind of crazy that you can do that as a job. And what I tell folks all the time is do you want the good guy to tell you what's wrong with you, or do you want the bad guy to tell you what's wrong with you? What we're noticing in the field in a uh, research lab at WordNet and also in conversation with other leaders in cybersecurity out in the industry is hey, are we prepared for this scenario? Right, as Mark said, unconventional warfare. And who is making those decisions? Is it a person, a human with emotion, or, or a robot? Who do you want to make that decision? I mean, we're almost letting the cars make that decision for us. Like, hey, you should turn over here. So this is a sign, right? But what when Skynet opens up and we're looking at the eyes of a robot who's ready to pull the trick? So these are some examples of the past and AI itself. Uh, it's so I'll let you all you know, take it in. So splinter attacks, inverse attacks, uh, uh, hearing with the guys, so oversharing and making confidential information, which is a concern from a variety perspective. We ask the AI in the sense why our organization is an example, it's conservative on the adapted the adoption of AI because what happens if someone within my organization leaks a configuration file or a firewall for the DOD, Department of Defense, and someone at the other end gets goes and finds this, this device, hey, can you please give me an example of the configuration of DOD? And it spits out all their encryption keys, passwords, and so on, right? So this is the worst case scenario. But as been seen, I think there's been, there's a few use cases where you can ask Chat you see, hey, write me a story on the on the and the malware that goes alongside to you know on this particular device, right? And it was good enough because there's no 
and our restriction to it, right? Well, we get control. So we're gonna go over two codes. We're gonna review the codes in two parts. We're gonna review it from the defense perspective, or we're gonna review it in the defense. Who, who does not know this, this reference up here? Okay, I mean, anyone not know this? Raise your hand. Nine. Okay, and just to understand who's not in the field, right? So cybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercybercyb
For example, if you're in a group of course of time, so it's poor little neighbor who has no idea what's going on. And so it's monitoring the network and making decisions. So it's behavior based. Hey, this computer doesn't normally talk to this computer. What are you doing? Hey, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to the web and how often do I see this on? So that's on the defense side. So, what I want to put in summary here is that the attacks are faster. The, the, the sophistication of the attacks are faster today versus our defenses. Right? And the only thing that's going to change is, in my opinion, is folks that are progressively looking at AI, generative AI, implements that to share information also within the community, as I mentioned earlier, the bad guy is communicating 20 times faster than us. You know, keep me honest on my time, how much time I got left. Perfect. Uh, the bad guy is communicating at a rapid speed. Yeah, so well. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, a, we have to communicate faster so we can enhance our defenses. So we can do faster detection within network secure, uh, security, right? Fast efficient detection because they're getting very good. Who's got, can someone give you an example of a good fishing? Like you look at this team of for that. Man, that was good. No? Yeah. They want to bring that every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> Anyone that's had their hand on the yes. cyber, yes. My camera is good. So they're even using, right? They're using, uh, he got a job offer for a, uh, yeah, that's all you think of it. The research on the companies, maybe, uh, the companies. And the gentleman over here. So I work for Microsoft, and they send uh, internal phishing mails intentionally to yep. our spots. And we call for them as soon as we have a minute. <laughs> right, so I can point this out because it's not just a crappy look at like Facebook or Amazon anymore or a five hundred dollar gift card. They understand this shit doesn't work, right? Sir, we uh, we got corporate credit card, and we got a phishing email that uh, asks us, you know, to get in and. Do something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but it was scary the amount of information the phishing people had about the corporate, the corporate credit card, who it was, who we were, um, and it, it, a lot of people clicked on the link and they, they shut it down quickly. But so um, I'm glad you mentioned the point about data. Right? Amazing how much data they have. Imagine how much data they're going to have. We don't get ahead of their volume with how we protect our data, right? A lot of these companies are spinning up, collecting all this information, how easy is it the attacker to pull it up, right? So uh, we are seeing AI in the financial industry as well for online frauds. And uh, as I mentioned, behavior analytics has been for a while, so we just need to further develop, help further really develop, and I will pass the mic back to Regine. So she understands the reference. She gave me this and I was like, I don't understand this. But this one, hey, I know I was doing really this and moving really into where we are today in the government as well, right? We're all here together, but at the same time, the point that we all escape. When we started the past, we delivered, and now we all feel like we're still in our own little land. Right? We've escaped, right? We're getting what we need, but we're still operating now, afraid to actually be free to use it. So, hence why we were saying, what are we doing? How are we getting it done and where are we going? So, we put more movie stuff in there, but this one fits perfectly now. What is what we can do? So, what am I looking for? It didn't work. Ah, it's good. If you see, I know what, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, we have a simple movie, right? So, give me on that, right? So, my logic is undeniable. I'm sad all the time, and then where are we heading? How do we get from there? And that gets you to fall off that we have falling off. So, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And if you have any other questions, we'll be around. Yeah, we'll be around.